Hi everyone, this is Bob from the Netscope team, and I want to spend a few moments introducing you to how the Netscope One platform helps organizations get visibility, control, and protection over their AWS environment, Amazon Web Services. So there's a number of use cases, but I'm going to focus on a few today. And the first one is security posture. So Netscope connects into AWS via API, and we perform a continuous security scan and assessment of your AWS environment. And this is using a number of out-of-the-box compliance benchmarks. We're basically looking for misconfigurations and non-compliant configurations uh, that could lead to not only compliance violations, but also potentially a data breach. Okay, so here are the results of the most recent scan in our AWS environment. We get a summary of the failed rules, the past rules. Um, I could scroll down here, you get all of the, uh, the categories, uh, the failed resources, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and just click in to this very common one, right? Ensure S3 bucket is not publicly accessible. Now, this is not only a common configuration, this is a common misconfiguration that takes place. And so we flag this, right? That this is absolutely the case that there is a publicly accessible bucket. Uh, so it failed this. Now, Netscope not only provides the definition, but we provide the remediation steps that you can follow for each of these failed rules. So the next time the scan takes place, the failed rule turns from red to green. Also, this tells you the compliance benchmarks that are basically tied uh, to that uh, particular rule, and there happens to be two here. So that is basically, from a posture standpoint, the first use case. Now, the second use case is a big challenge, and this is the world of rogue AWS accounts. We've all been there. You've got the corporate AWS account. You're trying to get your users, your developers, to use the corporate uh, AWS account. But what happens is people spin their own instance. They bring their own AWS account. Uh, so they it becomes kind of rogue usage and that presents risk with regards to uh, you know, intellectual property and data loss and all, all of those things. So here's where Netscope discovers all of the rogue accounts being used. Uh, we start with a, a dashboard that gives you a view of the number of accounts, number of users using those accounts, the trend of those rogue accounts over time, the most active users and the most active accounts, and then even activities that are being performed across those. So starting with that, you get the visibility and then the control part is where Netscope can put in controls that are intelligent. They're based on the app instance. And in this case, Here's an example intelligent policy where we're going to say if users are accessing the corporate AWS instance, the action we're going to take is allow. And we can, we can bring in surrounding context and criteria, the user, the group, the risk score of the user, all of those things. But ultimately, this is the corporate sanction instance of AWS. So we are going to allow that. So... Anything else, we're going to coach users, right? We want to get users over to the sanctioned account. So let me kind of give you the user experience look on that. If I go into AWS here and instead of logging into the corporate account, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try logging into another account. Netscope immediately detects that that is not the corporate AWS account and we block users from accessing that. But more than that, we coach the user and we even provide a very nifty redirection to the corporate app portal where they can deploy the AWS account that has been sanctioned uh, by the organization. So that helps a lot with that. Now, the next step in this is how do we, once the users get access to the sanction account, how do you make sure that risky activities are not taking place? And what I mean by risky activities, the scenario is a user with overprivileged access to AWS, something like EC2, there's a lot of things they can do um, that are in the form of destructive activities. 
So here's where Netscope, um, I've got this single policy here for EC2, and again, the corporate instance. And what I'm going to say, if any of these destructive activities are performed, create, delete, reboot, shut down, start, stop, terminate, in the corporate EC2, for the surrounding criteria, and you can bring in the user, their, their, their risk score, all these different surrounding criteria, what we're going to do is we're going to block. We don't want those destructive activities to take place. Now, traditionally, you'd use IAM controls to control that. But what happens is, again, there's misconfigurations. There's over overprivileged access. So this is another layer of controls on top of that. So if I go back to my AWS account, and this time I'm going to go ahead and log into the uh, corporate account. And it's uh, you know basically detected in this case that this is the corporate account. So it allowed me in, Netscope allowed me in. But what happens now is if I go into EC2 and the running instances, this is where the, the challenge is, right? I've got all these instances that are being hosted in EC2. Here's a service desk application used by thousands of users. This could be disastrous if I were to go in and perform a destructive activity. So I'm going to go in and, and stop this instance, right? Crazy scary. But what happens is in real time, Netscope decodes a stop activity in EC2 and we're able to block it. We stopped the stop activity. So we prevented the destructive activity uh, from taking place. And if you go back to the policy, we, we do this in EC2 specifically, uh, more than 26 different activities that can be governed across uh, EC2. Okay, so that is kind of the idea of destructive activities, but what if the user is not just going through the AWS console? What, what if they use AWS like most people use AWS, right? Through the CLI, the AWS CLI. So this is where Netscope not only looks at activities being performed in the browser, we're looking at activities being performed uh, across all usage uh, considerations, including AWS CLI. So here the user got a list of S3 buckets, pretty benign activity. Netscope saw that, we didn't block it. We could have could have blocked it. But in this case, I'm gonna perform a destructive activity. I'm gonna to try to delete one of these uh, S3 buckets, right? Now this is the big issue. So what happens is, is in real time, via the AWS CLI, Netscope decoded a delete activity and we're able to block that destructive activity. And again, it could be all tied to the risk score uh, uh, you know, of the user. It could be the identity, the device cost, all of those things are considerations when informing a policy decision, but ultimately we prevented the destructive activity. So there you have it. Netscope One platform for AWS, being able to provide visibility, control, and protection of your AWS environment so you can safely enable AWS and Netscope becomes the essential partner to enable that. Thank you very much.